Hello and welcome to the lunchtime live stream, a weekly Wednesday lunchtime live stream. Appreciate you guys being with us. Uh, I am Community Manager Cordovan. Uh, thanks for joining us here on twitch.tv slash DDO stream. Don't forget to give us a follow if you would like to be notified for whenever we're going live, just like we are right now on Orion. We are going to be running the Mask of Deception. This is one of the new free quests. Don't even need to be VIP. Any uh, DDO player can get uh, can uh, run this quest. Mask of Deception on Heroic on Orion. Uh, this is the uh, new Forgotten Realms one that uh, ties to the Tyranny of Dragons storyline. And uh, it's one that we haven't uh, really focused on as much during the live stream, so I thought it would be a fun one to do today. We have a mostly full group. We have uh, room for one more. We're going to see if anyone uh, comes in and joins us here, but I really do uh, appreciate you guys uh, watching. I do have to say, I think this is going to be our final weekly Wednesday lunchtime live stream of 2014. Uh, next week is Christmas Eve, so I'll be gone. Uh, and the week after that, I'm actually going to be taking uh, some time off as well. So uh, after today's show, we're going to be seeing you in the new year here on Twitch.tv uh, slash DDO stream. We do have, I, I think, some uh, community streamers will be streaming live over the uh, holiday break. Uh, it's kind of up to them and their schedules as to what they can do. So we might be going a little bit more quiet here on the, on the uh, Twitch channel here in the next couple of weeks. But uh, we should have something here for you. And uh, if we can carve out some time... We'll see what we can do, but uh, but this is the last scheduled, uh, well actually the fall fling after this is the last scheduled one that I've got for uh, 2014, so yes I know I'm being a slacker, but I'm actually, I'm going to be going to uh, visit relatives uh, back in Minnesota, so I'm going to be away from my computer and all that kind of thing, so I don't think I could uh, cram in, say, uh, a live stream on the 30th, so that just gonna have to do that so <laughs> but I will be working for those of you who are just like yes chance to troll up the forums no I will be keeping an eye on the forums even when I'm on vacation it never ends right because I enjoy it I like looking at all this stuff so all right so what do we want to uh, talk about just a little bit before we get going here uh, before we get going in the quest why don't we uh, talk a little bit about the bonuses uh, just a little bit about news and then we'll uh, get going here uh, so uh, this week, uh, for the bonus, we have 20% uh, guild renown. That's going to be kicking off uh, tomorrow, probably late morning, and run through the uh, weekend. And uh, throughout the holiday break as well, we have a uh, heroic and epic XP bonus uh, and some other uh, good stuff as well that we'll be announcing uh, next week, I believe. And... Uh, the other big change I guess we should mention is uh, yesterday we did uh, adjust some of the numbers on Monster Champions. Uh, you know, it debuted with Update 24. Uh, we were just spent the weekend looking at the numbers of, say, quest completions and, and the data and the, a lot of the feedback. If anyone who's visited any of our social networks or uh, DDO forums will know that Monster Champions has been a really big topic. And uh, we appreciate that, actually. It's great to, uh, to get that kind of... Uh, uh, massive feedback because it means you guys are really interested in the topic and talking to us about it. So after doing a little bit of analysis, uh, yesterday we did scale back the spawn rate on monster champions, uh, both on hard and elite, particularly on hard. We also did also reduce some of their damage buffs uh, that they get. Uh, down to, uh, I believe it was 25%. You can find the actual numbers for all this stuff on the DDO forums, but uh, you know, we did scale it back. So you, you are still going to see Monster Champions, but you'll see a, a little, uh, somewhat fewer of them than you saw when Update 24 was released last Thursday. And uh, continue to give us feedback on it. Let us know, is it still too high? Is it too low? Uh, what kind of uh, experiences are you having in there? So... All right, why don't we uh, why don't we get going here on the Mask of Deception, huh? You guys ready? I'm thinking we're about level 14, 15, 16. So we definitely shouldn't do Elite, although we do have one level 20 with us. Um, I'm thinking Hard. What do you guys think? Hard sound all right? Sure, sounds fine. Well, we'll find yeah. out. Maybe we'll just get wiped, and then we'll go in on normal. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. And I'm going to leave the LFM open just in case someone wants to uh, join us here. Uh, I am taking uh, questions in chat, so if you have a question for us about Update 24, Monster Champions, whatever, uh, talk to us in our Twitch chat, and if we can answer them, uh, we will. Let me actually take a look quick as to what we have right now. 
I'll place my bets on how many times I'm going to die. I have to admit this guy's kind of a wimp, because uh, he really hasn't been geared up since about level 12. <laughs> so he's kind of kind of gear poor, but that's okay. Uh, let, so yes, I suspect there may be a few deaths, but, uh, but we'll see what happens here. Um... Uh, so Titan asked, did, didn't we say that orange-named mobs are not supposed to be champions? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, uh, orange-named mobs uh, predominantly are, are still going to have a higher percentage of champions than than non-orange-named mobs. And, and we use the term uh, mini-bosses sometimes for orange-named mobs, so when we talk about mini-bosses, that's what we mean. Uh, but they still have uh, up to a 33% drop rate, I believe, on hard and 66 on elite. So pretty high uh, that your orange name mobs are going to be uh, monster champions. But you know, unlike when uh, it f the it first came out uh, last week, uh, you're not going to necessarily see them every single time. Titan asks, uh, "Can I get some followers for you?" Uh, maybe uh, I noticed Titan. Uh, 201419 on our Twitch chat. He's a regular on Twitch. Is uh, now streaming live himself, and that is Titan201419 on his Twitch page. So twitch.tv slash Titan201419. Uh, give him a follow. Uh, watch his shows. It'd be awesome. Thanks. All right, Let's say we're looking looking all right here. You guys want to get started? <clears throat> Masked members of the cult of the dragon have been reported near this spot. Perhaps you can take them unawares. You pull the mask from the fallen cultist and slip it into your pack. You may be able to use it to deceive them. See, does, did everyone get a dragon mask? I've been hearing some conflicting uh, information on that. It should be in your inventory. I'm looking. It's, I don't. I don't know where I put it. It's not. I don't see one either. All right. Yeah, I got one too. So maybe not everybody got one, huh? Yeah. Do we all need one, or...? Well, you only need one if you want to, uh, sort of further stealth your way through the quest. But I, I think we'll we'll just go with what we have here. If you have the mask, then you don't have to fight all these okay. guys, because they you... think you remember. Yeah. And that's actually something I think I'd like to, uh, bring back to the devs to see if we couldn't perhaps spawn enough masks for everyone in the party here in that section. I believe there's another way you can get the mask, but I can't 100% uh, remember how to do that, so. Just check and see if there are any extra mobs. I don't see any. I think we'll have to just give it a try. See, like, all uh, Oh, there's our first monster champ. See, if we're wearing the mask, then they won't get aggroed. So the basic idea of this quest, and I don't want to get too spoilery, but the basic idea of this quest is the more mobs we beat now, the fewer we're going to have to deal with later. And uh, there's a, not just combat ways to take care of these guys.
Nice. I love the whole support. Yeah, I've got that on uh, my uh, uh, my artificer on Argo, I believe. I love that item. Oh, someone stoned him. Nice, it just assassinated the champion. <laughs> oh, very nice. Let's see if I can pick that. Yes, I'm sure that on Epic Elite, uh, my level 15 assassinate ability would probably not, uh, not work very well. It is a little hard to be stealthy, right, with a big beholder like that? No, no, it's fine. I, I'm just saying. That white dragon death got the best of me. Yeah, we're actually doing pretty good on hard. We could have maybe done elite, but we'll see. Yeah, so far I'm getting in the only second. Okay, that's what always gives me that thing growls. Those things look like traps. Yeah, there's traps here. I think it's traps when you come back. It's like you hit something right. and then the traps fell. Yeah, after we pick up the mask oh, wow. here. I'm not uh, spotting them though. Maybe my search isn't high enough. I was just saying those things on the wall look like a trap. Yeah. I have no idea if there is or isn't. Yeah, yeah, you get you get down to the end, and then uh, they set off and shoot the darts on the way back. Oh, Hello. Yep. So, like, uh, you know, without spoiling it too much, so one thing you can do, for example, is you can, uh, uh, like, say, there's a tavern, right? So if you go into the tavern, there's a bunch of dragon cultists, and provided you have the mask on, they won't. Uh, attack you, and then you can buy everyone in the uh, place a drink, so that they're all uh, tipsy and they don't attack uh, when you're coming back. You know, that's one example, and there's several options like that throughout yeah, this quest that you can do. 
cool. All right, let me uh, take a quick look at our chat room. Uh, Abacus asks, I noticed the cooldown before using the shared bank a second time has increased. Is this going to get handled? Uh, that's actually working as intended. That's one of our anti-exploit uh, measures that had to go in with update 24. So I just have to give it a second if you're basically click, click, clicking on things and uh, let it let it sort of uh, do a little timer there. So no, that's uh, unlikely to change anytime soon. Sorry. It's necessary. Uh, Jaren Aran asks, any idea when Rezia starts? Is it next week? Uh, no, it's not next week, although we are planning to uh, have it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's in January here. I'd have to take a look at my calendar to be sure, but I'm pretty sure it's in January that we'll see uh, Rezia back here. All right, uh, well, I guess one of us should take this mask, huh? Off the pedestal. A piercing alarm fills the air. Alright, yeah, here's our uh, traps again. I don't know. Like I say, I don't think my search is high enough to actually catch this, so we'll just have to sort of make our way through it. Unless FUD, so yeah, let's see if I, I don't do know it. if you can get these darts. Unless FUD. Whoa. Might not be able to get yeah. these. Just have yeah. to dance your way through. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm not uh, spotting it or searching at all. Although, to be fair, I'm not 100% sure where the trap box is. <laughs> yeah. I think there are some traps you can get. Like the slicing sound there. All right, our chat room is having some difficulty finding it, too, so I guess we'll just sort of have to do without. There we go. Let's see, that's an ominous sound. Yeah, I'm not, uh, not seeing anything. I made it. So what do you guys think? Uh, is evasion still king? Or are you uh, you into the uh, PRR and MRR and all that? Oh, heck no. My whizzy has two levels of world, strictly for evasion, still loving it. And obviously this monk, which I haven't played in a long time, is loving it. Alright, so once we get into the hallway here, it's, or get out into the uh, entrance, it could be pretty uh, tricky, so let's, uh... Ooh, man. I think we can get these ones. Yeah. My, uh, my search is so poor, I don't know if I'm gonna find it. Yeah, I'm not sure where the boss is. Uh, we are making our way back out of the building here, is what we're doing. Alright, well... I guess we'll just sort of make our way. Like I say, once we get out of the building here, uh, we have, I think, a pretty significant combat because we're gonna, we didn't really neutralize much in the way of mobs here, so. Uh, maybe put down some crowd control if we have it and try to fight uh, really right at the entrance to the doorway here, as I guess what I'd do. 
So there's uh there's some optionals on that that we didn't uh didn't do. Uh, but we could always just not do them either. We could try, we could not we, do them either. We could try those. I think it might I be did it over late, the actually. weekend once and we just I think it might oh, Okay. I did it o this one over the weekend and we just kinda ran through real quick. Yeah, yeah, it can be a pretty quick run, which is um, kind of yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it, because the, the barn yeah. isn't even yeah, open now. Yeah. Okay. For um, evasion, um, I'm still with a combination of uh, evasion and, and dodge and blurry. Works pretty good. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I you know, it's hard to say, because right? Cause I've, I've been doing this long enough now that... Uh, playing this game long enough now that you sort of get into the habit of, of evasion, right? So I I haven't, I mean, I guess I, you know, I did oh, yeah. recently switch my uh, cleric really to just heavy armor wearing PRR and all that again. But he's not really uber spec or anything, he's kind of a wimp. Voices. Yeah, voices. Ooh, someone got the uh, the orb. Yeah, this is a sorcerer, so damage reduction or, or, or melee skills isn't really suited for it. But I, I was just in, in the process of PRing my my barbarian uh, to make him a paladin. I think I'll, I'll take a close look at that and try to build that up. Cool. As someone's telling me in chat, it looks like maybe those uh, traps are, are kind of bugged right now, so that may be why we <laughs> didn't take much damage through them. Oh well. Alright, maybe it was good Good we did it on hard then. Oh, there's no... Yeah, they weren't really doing any damage. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so why don't we uh, head on over back to the Eberron side and run like maybe Palace of Stone? Does that sound good? Same tune. Yeah, I, same for me. I'm, I am going to need to uh, log out real quick, though, um, so I can use the Hall of Heroes to get back to have on, on this guy. It's true, I never did, uh, never haven't done Web of Chaos on this guy yet, so I can't get to the Evening Star Cavern. And I, my, I have a guild that I created, but I don't have a, a guild airship, because <laughs> I never bought one on this guy. So, yeah, uh, my bad, but, uh, hey, that works. This works. I actually really like the, uh, the new, uh, uh Hall of Heroes. It's, uh, pretty easy to get. I, the, the new Hall of Heroes is nice to, to get around. Uh, we tweaked some of the hey. stuff. Where'd you go? Uh, I'm back on the Eberron side. I did. I, I saw you standing next to me, and then you disappeared. Yeah, I logged out and logged back in through the uh, Hall of Heroes. I did. I'm standing in Hall of Heroes right now. Oh well, whatever. Um, where am I going? Ah, uh, we're going to the Twelve. Yeah, I haven't done any of the new quests. Ooh, cool. Which is sad. Considering I'm VIP, I can do anything I want. Well, for good reason. Yeah, they're pretty cool. 
But I like them. I am biased, but I think they're great. <laughs> you were one of the developers. So one kind of unusual thing with the Palace of Stone quest is to actually get to the quest, you'll have a housewarming invitation show up in your inventory. You double click on that, and then uh, then you can enter. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm free to play. I still don't have the pack, so I'm gonna uh, drop here. But uh, oh, I no, just want to say it's. Uh, don't worry about it. I can. Been a pleasure running with you. If you don't want to, I can get it. you a guest pass. That's no problem. Oh, that would be great. Uh, I love the Delirium chain, and and um, really looking forward to to picking this one up. I just haven't got it quite yet. That's what I liked about the game when I first joined years ago. People were always giving people the guest passes. Cool. Should be good. Should be good. Thank, thank you. I got that. Oh, goody. Looking forward to this. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's enter the quest. Uh, maybe do hard on this one too. It seemed to work out okay. This one's a little higher level, but should be all right. Yeah, this one's a little. First run, it's always good to run it safe. Yes, Dirk probably should get a DUI. Although he's not driving, right? He's walking. Doesn't matter if he's uh, had a few too many. Uh, no beholder, but I got an eye on it. See if I can get a beholder here. That's true. Dirk should definitely be arrested for public intoxication. He's been drunk for years. Years, I tell ya. Years, I tell ya. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Quite the bender. Although maybe he's not drunk, maybe he's just insane. He is deranged, Come after all. And join the party. It's quite a lively group. Now that you're here, we can begin the ceremony. Feel free to explore the palace. The halls of reflection, the galleries of motion, the museum, it's all at your disposal. My staff will do their best to give you a suitable welcome. Now I must leave you. I must see to the Lord of Eyes in the darkness. Swallow him. I only invited him because the rules compel me to... Meet me at the summit of glory when you've toured the palace. We'll catch up then. The insane Dalkir vanishes, leaving you alone inside his vast underground home. The Museum of Stone. Oh, I must confess, it is my favorite place in the entire palace. You really do have excellent taste for a little log of flesh. 
Welcome to the Museum of Stone, devoted to stone in all its many forms. Its history, its variety, its ecology, its social habits and customs. Please continue to the first exhibit. Uh, Abacus asks, is there a chain giver for the uh, Heart of Madness quests? No, they don't have an overarching uh, story arc. I mean, they do, but we don't have an, uh, a typical chain reward for them. So they're uh, standalone quests, so you just talk to the NPCs there. Everyone is fascinated by it. You know, I don't believe you're paying attention. Very well. I shall endeavor to make the exhibits more lively. I'll look into that uh, Fire of the Dragon Leader. He asks about so one of the new swords doesn't have an augment slot that he feels should. Um, I don't really know whether it should or not. I, I don't haven't looked into that one. I'll have to look when into that more. Sorry. Possibility for upgrade. Yeah, right. He can assassinate a rock. Let's give it a try. I wonder if they can dance. Dancing rocks? Yeah, right. Actually, have we tried that? Let's try that. Why would we? Actually, let's try that. <laughs> well, we got a disco ball going. Oh, uh, I mean, they are <laughs> animate objects, so maybe not. But. When the first living things crawled out to populate Eberron, what did they Okay, we have a champion stone. <laughs> champion mud ball. He was the pet rock. Afterwards, he <laughs> fell on hard times, ended up in a museum. <laughs> so, I mean, does he aspire to be a mountain from there? <laughs> yeah, there you go. I could have been a continent. Uh, is there one? Oh yeah, here we go. A killstorm asked, "What was the most difficult thing dealing with when making the quest chain?" Um. Uh, I should say, I didn't actually make the quest chain, right? So that would be the more question for the people who actually did that. But I think it was really just a matter of uh, trying to keep true to the sort of Zorian madness, right? Because our Zorian quests have always been a little a little different. And, uh, you know, doing that justice, I think, is something that, that was important. When the blood of ancient comes, drenched the battlefield, it was You know, everyone wants to make aliens, not Alien 3, right? Man, that guy's a whip. Stone and Lord of Eyes crack me up. They're pretty funny. Ooh, nice. Two chests. Oh, three potions of wonder. <laughs> nice. Have to drink one. Oh, I see a gold coin in Let's there. See what happens oh, to me. Gold. Bottoms up. 
Ooh, yeah, what yeah, happened there? Ouch. So, yeah, bees and Zoria. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> ouch, 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 ouch. You got bees. Oh, <laughs> I got bees. Anyone got a dispel? I don't think so. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Yeah, Jared Aron says, uh, we did a good job on the obsession yeah. of the Lord of Stone with his domain. <laughs> I think that's pretty funny how uh, stone obsessed he is. Yeah. Did they take away the one that does instant death on the potion? Uh, I don't know. That used to always be funny. Drake, thud. Of course, watching him with the bees is kind of funny. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> bees are gone. What the heck was that? Oh. Barrel. Hams! Hams. Yeah, someone's yep. it up. Look at all the ham! <laughs> Tasty ham. Ham. Can we eat it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's ham. You put it on your hot bar. It takes a little bit to eat it though. Can't do it mid-battle. Uh, Rothko46 asks in chat, will the Temple of Elemental Evil uh, use any lore from the Greyhawk setting? Uh, we're still really kind of exploring uh, what we want to do in terms of the lore, but I think what we're going to find is that it kind of... it is technically, right? It is technically going to be in Greyhawk, but I think what we're going to find is that we are keeping it fairly generic, um, just because we're not building a big campaign setting mm -hmm. out of it and all that too. So, so while I would, you know, not say there won't be any references or that, I think we're going to kind of sort of let it, uh, sort of sit on its own a little bit. Come join us in the galleries of Come join us. I'm just about to show them to the Lord of Eyes. But that could change, you know. We'll, we'll see. What do you think? Demands the Lord of Stone. I don't know. Stone is so static, so unchanging, so dull. Still, I suppose it suits you. No, oh, he understands nothing. Fumes the Lord of Stone. The galleries of motion show just how wrong he is. Stone? Static? Nothing could be further from the truth. Stone <laughs> is in motion all around us. Really looking forward to uh, the uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's still in a pretty early stage. Like we don't have a lot of uh, oops, like we're just doing some art and and some work on it now. So I've, I'm seeing some of the hallways on that. But we, it hasn't been fully fleshed wow. out. Um, it's looking great, though. <laughs> I, I can't wait. I think if you like, if particularly if you like sort of the way we did Haunted Halls, I think you're going to be real happy with uh, uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. Yeah, it's one of the first modules that I had when I was a kid. Yeah, me too. I never played all the way through, but... Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, no, I, I had it, and I, I read through it, and... Can't wait. See, we had a bad habit of buying modules, reading them, and then kind of making our own game out of it. Yeah, yeah, I did the same. Yeah, I, I pretty was pretty loose with uh, basing it on on the actual module itself, with a few exceptions. I always really liked the Desert of Desolation series, so I ended up running that one a couple of different times. Oh yeah, they were always a company you just looked at it and were like, that's just cool. I think, I'm trying to think what the very first module I ever got was. I mean, besides Keep on the Borderlands, which came with the basic set, or Isle of Dread on Expert set, I think the first one I bought was Ghost Tower of Inverness. The one with the Vampire Tower. Um, uh, Ravenloft? Yeah. Uh, uh, 
God, we played that thing to death. Yeah, I saw that at the, the store. I got into Dragonlance. I had all the Dragonlance series, and then uh, the Greyhawk pack. The box yeah. set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that too. I, I actually still have that. <laughs> I actually was able to keep my box in fairly oh, decent actually. shape. Yeah, I think I have it boxed up at, at home. I really like the map that came with that box set. It's one of my favorite sort of D&D maps. I had it on my wall when I was a kid. The Greyhawk map? Yep, yep. That was like one of my pieces of wall art as a kid. Yep, I had uh, that and I had uh, the uh, the old uh, cloth map that came with Ultima 4, if you uh, ever think oh, how old you were. Yeah. Ultima 4, I love that. Yeah. I filled uh, a, a lot of classes in, in grade 9 because of Ultima 4. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I just skipped school and stayed home and played games until my parents found out and I, and I was in school. No comment. <laughs> oh, it's a gargoyle. Man. <laughs> Keep getting knocked down. What the hell? Oh, I thought I was taking some or something. I that. Uh, let me quick look at chat again. I think we have a couple more questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, Overvan asks, any chance... Uh, Overvan asks, any chance that we will modify champion spawn rates again? Uh, I'd say there's a... It's definitely something that could happen. You know, what we did uh, this week was really sort of an immediate reaction, uh, just based on available data and all that sort of thing. But we may well, you know, we have the ability to change uh, at least some aspects of Monster Champions without taking the servers down. So if we do see a lot of feedback in any particular direction, you know, too many, too few, uh, too hard, too easy, etc., we do have the ability to change that again and, uh, you know, have no issues with doing that if, if that's what the community uh, is interested in saying. So. I, think, uh, I think one of the things we found with all the feedback on Monster Champions is that... Um, there's a pretty diverse array of opinions on it in terms of, uh, you know, the spawn rates and how difficult it should be and how difficult it is and all that sort of thing. So I think we'd want to be careful before we just go too crazy on, on sort of uh, just adjusting things willy nilly. But, but yeah, absolutely, we could change it again if we wanted to. Oh, I kind of like it. Hey, speaking of, check it. See, I don't mind that. Oh, there's two down there. Yeah. Since when you look down, you see a line of them. You're like, okay, that's just silly. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna run back to the shrine here. Yeah, sounds good. We'll uh, we'll hang on. If I can make yeah, it. Sounds good. We'll uh, we'll hang on. Okay. Uh, we'll get into a couple more questions here. Uh, Jay Renarin asks, Will Temple of Elemental Evil have more encouragement for people to run all parts of it? Um, you know, in his opinion, there was not enough encouragement to necessarily get into the nooks and crannies of haunted halls from a uh, risk for versus reward perspective. Uh, yeah, that is something that we've been thinking of, and uh, we do have some ideas in terms of how to, you know, because we want you to have. I guess what you might call a critical path, but also because the Haunted Halls uh, and uh, Temple of Elemental Evil, rather, is so big, we want to make sure that there are uh, lots of exploration you can do, too. So we have been thinking about, I think, various reward systems we could do to further encourage sort of those who were interested to do that. And so, I, I, yes, I would expect to see perhaps a little more encouragement um, in the reward factor uh, for Temple of Elemental Evil. Uh, Yamanir has asked, will there be a named heroic buckler in Update 25? Uh, I don't actually know what the loot's going to be for Update 25 yet. I'd have to ask the loot guy, but I can let him know that you want a buckler. <laughs> would make for a great title. I am the loot guy. 
<laughs> yeah, right. Well, it's, that's actually not technically true. We have several people who work on loot, and, and they're all part of the content uh, design team. So it's not like uh, we just have one loot guy, but we have a couple of people who predominantly focus on it. Yeah, and we have a couple of people. But it's pretty common for one person to do a particular update, right? So someone will uh, take care of the majority of the items for whatever quest pack and stuff's going on, just for consistency. I just, when you said that, I had envisioned, you know, some guy saying off the guard, hey, hey, come here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's the loot god. All right, let's, uh, let's do this, I guess, huh? Do we have sprint spawning, or did someone bring Yeah, I'm guessing these guys are just coming from the, uh, uh, shrine area, right? Ah. <laughs> Get away from me. Yeah, uh, someone asked if Reezy and Midwinter will take place at the same time, and yes, uh, typically we run both of them at the same time. Watched the series Grim? I've seen it, but uh, I don't watch it regularly. I don't know, I used to do this as a kid. It's like, hmm, how would a Grim fit in a DD setting? I think it's. Shifter? No, that'd be the, uh, the enemy. The Grims themselves are all humans. Oh, okay. They're the hunters. You know, RG2 play says in a decent group you don't even notice the champions. I, I tend to 
that's been my experience as well. I mean, even when they were out there pre-yesterday spawn rates, you know, you were definitely seeing a lot more of them. But I, I wasn't finding it to be too difficult. I mean, certainly there were people on the forums and Facebook and such that, that had much different experience than I did. But I, I didn't overall find it to be particularly tough. I didn't really have a too bad an experience, but I'm kind of an experienced yeah. guy, so... Yeah, no, same. Um, I overall I enjoyed the the champions. Um, I can understand people wanting them to tone down a little bit, but it's uh, uh, yeah, it's good to have them overall. The only time I you'd run into, I think there were particular times where it was difficult. Like I did do a haunted halls run, and when all of the uh, the end. Uh, uh, animated armors were all champions that could get pretty tricky. <laughs> I like the champions because it, to me, it cuts down berserking. Oh, you want to yeah. pull everything in the dungeon? Yeah, have fun. Yeah, and you know, all those people were like, "Yeah, I can run everything on the lead." Really? Go for it. Let's, let's face it; it's not really a lead if anyone can just run through it by themselves. It should. Be I can decide with you. So the thing that takes away for the thing that can take away from the experience for me is when you know you you get a new pack, you're look, looking forward to it, and then uh, the group that you pug with just uh, goes invisible and half runs halfway through it on invis. Yeah, that's right. Like, oh, we can just ignore and, this stuff. Like, oh, we can just ignore this stuff. Yeah, and it's like you wanna. Kind of enjoy it, work for it. Or in the case of VIPs, no, I don't want to endure it. I paid for it. I want to enjoy every single second. Of it. Yeah. I want to sit here and be able to watch the artwork, look at the. You know, do whatever I want. Just run to the end, and grab my prize. Yeah, I mean, not. Uh, just yeah. run to the end, and grab my prize. And, yeah, I'd like, like to go through it at least once to go through it kind of slower and, and figure it out. Um, but, you know, once once you get used to it, going through it quick is is, uh, uh, is ultimately what you want to do as well. But, uh, Take a moment to but, yeah, that's true. You know, it did yeah, lead there's to something a that you can put in there to right. make people think a little bit. Yeah. I think it adds to the experience. But, you know, that was true. I thought that was true back in the 10 days ago. People were like, oh, well, you know, I'm just here for the fight. Like, you know, the guy sat down, started out, and he wants to tell you what's going on. Let him. I spent a lot of time and effort doing this, and sometimes it can be fun. I think there's always a balance between, like, say, smelling the flowers and, and observing, but when the balance gets too far one way, then it's, uh, yeah, you gotta, gotta think of that balance, keep that in mind. Right, and, and also it's really just a matter of, you know, there is a diverse um, level of difficulty that people want, right? So, uh, for everyone who wants a really hardcore experience, there's someone who, you know, kind of still wants their bravery bonus and, and feels just like they can't, they weren't making progress, um, you know, with heavy spawn rates on Elite. So, yeah. ultimately what we're trying to do is find a nice middle ground. And, uh, you know, we did just make this change yesterday, so I guess I'll leave it up to others to, to say whether we've uh, hit that or not, but... Yeah. Uh, sadly, we are humans. Can't please everybody. Yep. <laughs> Ah, I'm slow, that's what's going on. Yeah, 
down, I pulled up. And refreshed, I trust. Good. Now, be on your way. There's much more to see in the Palace of Stone. All right, uh, we're getting to the uh, the final room here. Overvan is suggesting we remove bravery bonus and replace it with some other kind of bonus. Uh, you know. That would be a very controversial decision, right? Because people sure do love their bravery streaks. Mm. But uh, it is something that we've we've at least talked about. Not removing altogether, but just kind of figuring out, well, what could we do instead, right? To, to help encourage our goals and all that sort of thing. Uh, the other part of Overvan's question is to remove the uh, XP loss on party member death. That is something that I say is... And we don't have a scheduled update for it, but it's something that I think we may well end up doing. Uh, just making it an individual bonus rather than a group bonus. Couldn't tell you when that's going to happen, but I'd say the odds of that happening are fairly good, barring any technical issues or things that might come up like that. Wouldn't that be nice? Because I actually feel bad sometimes when I die and the whole party's like, two thanks, man. Well, it's funny that people call it, you know, an XP loss, but really it's a lack of a bonus. I mean, ultimately it means the same thing, but technically you're not losing anything. You just didn't get something, right? Yes, but the perception <laughs> is... <laughs> no, I understand. ...dedicated to those who have reached the very pinnacle of perfection. A place dedicated to... Myself. As you can see, I have no use for false modesty. Why, even my mere likeness is capable of crushing a lump of flesh such as yourself. Someone actually, uh, Crexus mentions, he liked the old, uh, when you die you lost XP. As someone who doesn't have a problem with dying. <laughs> I found that to be fairly punishing, but, uh... Yeah, that, that was before my time. That sounds pretty, pretty rough. It could be. I mean, the main reason we got rid of it was it was a clear disincentive. You know, people would die enough, you'd have one of those bad nights, and then you were sort of encouraged to, to log out until, uh, until you got your XP stuff back, so... It was one of those things where maybe it made sense from kind of a uh, risk reward system, but when it came down to, to gameplay and all that, it just didn't really work. I think I have aggro. I think I've got some healing pots here. Alright, right, Zeppin, why don't you try to uh, stand still for a sec, we'll group up on him. Whoa. 
I'll use the ham, right. I have that ham. <laughs> I'll switch this guy over to an acrobat and use that for a little while. Nice stick. <laughs> Alright, well I think that's going to uh, have to do with the live stream here. Uh, we're going to be back at uh, 1.30 for the fall fling, and uh, later today or maybe tomorrow I will email, uh, mail you guys in game uh, a code f uh, for 500 turbine points as well. Uh, just to say thanks for running with me today and all that sort of thing. So expect that either today or tomorrow. Yay! Oh, cool. I didn't expect that. Um, Thank you. You're pretty much. Uh, what, what server are you hitting when you come back? I haven't decided yet. Uh, one of those that I haven't ah. done yet. I think I've got uh, Galanda. I know I have Galanda and Wayfinder yet to do, so maybe one of those um, on this cycle. Probably Galanda, maybe, huh? I don't know. Alrighty. Well, thank you for the run. Just want to say well, thank you. Just want to say thank you very much, Corvin, for everything you do for the uh, community. Um, and it was a great pleasure to run with you. And uh, I'm listening to all of the old uh, DDO cast. I'm at uh, number 112 right now, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Oh, awesome. I'm humbled. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. All right. Uh, before we uh, get going here, let me uh, take one last look at chat. Uh, I think that's going to do it. Like I say, we'll be back at 1.30. Don't forget to give us a follow on twitch.tv slash ddostream if you'd like to be notified not just when we go live for shows like this, which is every Wednesday at noon Eastern, uh, but also when our community streamers are streaming live on Twitch. And if you would like to be one, if you would like to take your DDO live stream and do a show on DDO stream, get in touch with me. Either uh, PM me through the forums, you can DM me on Twitter, uh, you can send me a message, uh, DDO stream a message on Twitch. There's a whole bunch of ways to get in touch with me. Uh, let me know if you're interested, and I'd uh, love to talk to you about uh, bringing you to DDO stream as well. So we'll be back in about uh, 25 minutes here, and we will do a, a turbine point code giveaway on the chat room as well. But until next time, have fun, everyone, and we'll see you soon.